Welcome, it is great to have you join us. My name is Nicole Mitchell and I'm part of a team called Uncovering Greatness. And I help you get yourself out of the way of you. And i um, really, really excited. Today I have joining with us is Dr. Marina Botta. So Marina, please introduce yourself. Thank you, Nicole. So I'm Marina Botta. Yes, I'm very privileged to be part of the team that has been um, certified to be processes in December last year. And you're glad to be uh, with you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Marina. And um, yeah, I really appreciate you taking the time to, to be here and, and join us today. And um, yeah, just a little bit about my background is um, about sort of three and a half years ago, I found myself in a space where I was really struggling with going through everyday motions. I used to take my girls to school. I used to come home and go back to bed and I just couldn't get myself to move. I just had no energy. I just couldn't understand, you know, why am I here doing what I'm doing? And I was unbelievably grateful because um, Blair Singer, who's one of the Rich Dad Advisors, he came to South Africa and he introduced me to Advanced Coaching and Leadership Center which is based in Dallas, Texas in the US. And I did some processing with them. And within six months, I found myself in the US doing the course to become a, a certified processor and just have absolutely loved, loved, loved the journey and just being able to radically shift where I was. And my goal now is to help other people do the same. And yeah, just through that process, um, Marina, Kirsten, Queen and Makriet came along and, and joined us on the journey. And it's just been really awesome to be able to shift people out of a space where they don't know where they are and they have no idea how to move forward. So Marina, maybe you can share some of, of your journey. Yeah, so it's really been a, a quite an interesting journey. Um, I found my one day when I went into to the office, um, Barry was there and said, do I want to do VF1? This processing course, it would really be beneficial for, for my clients. And I thought, oh, I don't know, but I ended up and said, yes, I'll do this. And yeah, I ended up doing all, all five the uh, the VF courses. And for me, every journey, I learned more about myself. And every journey just came at the right time. So every time there was a journey, there was some sort of challenge that I was faced with on a personal level. And that journey helped me just to move through that. So just our second VF course, while we were on the course, the US was locking down with COVID and suddenly on, while we were on this course, they, they said we are shutting down for COVID. And up till then, because I work more in a holistic space, I'm working more in preventative medicine. I really didn't think about what was going on and it's going to affect, you know, us or me and, and I was sort of, really shutting that out for me. So then it became a reality. And I'm so glad for this journey because it just helped me to, for this past, you know, how many, how long have we been in this process now, all these, these months to just keep me grounded and, and helping me to move forward. And, and what I found is this, and you said this certainly, was the final piece of what I needed to help my clients moving forward. Because for most of them, I want them to move forward and do changes in health, but they need to do the lifestyle changes. Mm -hmm. And behavior changes, as you all know, is not easy to make. So just realizing that when people struggle to do behavior changes, what they are sitting with are these blocks and places where they are stuck. And you know, just learning about that, experiencing it, releasing the blocks and the stop. I just knew this, this is the final piece that I needed to add to what I'm offering that can really help my clients to move forward. So long story, but that's my story. Thank you. 
<laughs> Thank you so much. And I love the fact that you spoke about blockages, because that's what we're going to be talking about today is um, pretty much when you are trapped and stuck right here in the yellow zone. And um, it is, it's that, you know, procrastination. Should I, shouldn't I? Should I get up this morning? I mean, today's a really great example here in Joburg. It's freezing for those of you watching on Facebook and from other parts of the, the world. It was um, two, when I got in my car and reversed it out the driveway, it was uh, four degrees. And then by the time we got halfway to, to CrossFit, it was um, two degrees. And then I think it even went down to one and a half. So it was, <laughs> was pretty cold, yeah. And there was ice all over my car. And so it's, and the, it hasn't warmed up much either. So it's, it's pretty cold here, but it's a really great example of it's cold. And I don't think I'm going to get out of bed this morning. I'll just lie here for another half an hour. Oh, you know what? I'm not going to go to gym or I'm not going to go on that walk or I'm not going to do that exercise or I'm not going to get up and do my meditation or whatever it is. And it's because it's cold and we procrastinate and we get stuck and we kind of go, I'll, I'll do it tomorrow. <laughs> but in the back of our minds, we're kind of going, mm, well, maybe tomorrow will be cold as well. Okay, well, don't worry. I, today, I'm just worried about today. I'm not going <laughs> to. And we kind of go, and it's a really great example of how we don't stay present. We, in that moment, it's cold. I don't feel like it. I'll go tomorrow. I'm just going to, you know, pull the blankets back up and, and get another half an hour sleep. And what we don't see is it's, I'll do it tomorrow. So we're already pushing ourselves into the future and we're going, I'll do it tomorrow. And we're not present with where we are right now. And because of that, then we stay stuck and we procrastinate and we kind of go, oh, you know what? I'll do it tomorrow. <laughs> you know what, I've got a whole bunch of phone calls to make, I've got sales calls to make, I've got all this stuff to do, I'll do it tomorrow, <laughs> or I'll do it, you know, I'll, I'll get to it later today, I'm just gonna, you know, stay in, in bed for an extra 10 minutes this morning, and then suddenly we go through the day, and we have this horrendous day where nothing goes right, and then we kind of, the next day it's like, oh, well, you know what, I just, I had such a terrible day yesterday that I'm going to, I'm just going to stay in bed. And we've already made the decision before we go to bed that tomorrow morning I'm staying in bed. <laughs> and we, we find ourselves here in this space where it becomes maybe, or, you know, I'll, I'll do it if somebody makes me do it. Or, and we, we land up in this space where we procrastinate and, and we don't get anything done. And, uh, I was having a, a chuckle with Marina be beforehand and she, she's like, are we not discussing the red zone today? Cause that's how I'm feeling. And I was like, me too. <laughs> you know, it's cold. And, it's, and, you know, one of the things that happens is we, we have a day where we, we kind of go, you know what, it's cold. I'm going to stay stuck in bed. And then everything just gets delayed. And then because it's delayed, we forget little things. And suddenly those little things be become huge mountains and what that does is it actually causes us to stay trapped and stay stuck. And so because we had a, a sort of red zone day, it's kind of, we, we become way more cautious and we operate here in the yellow zone where it's like, should I? Well, let me think about it. And I mean, I'll, I'll share with you this morning. I am, um, it was just, it was one of those like red zone moments. I finished with a client and so I was working and I wasn't working from my home office I was working from the business office and I was running a little bit late and so got here just on time raced to get here and finished with the client and then decided that I was going to go quickly to the garage to go and get um because I left I didn't bring any lunch I was like okay between clients I'm going to shoot to the garage quickly to the woolies and go and get something to eat and so I drove to the Woolies and I got there and I parked and I turned around and there's no handbag in the car which means I don't have anything to pay for, for the food okay no problem turn around come back and I asked somebody else if I could borrow borrow their card and drive back to the garage and realize I don't have a mask <laughs> And it's like, oh, flip. okay, so I'll, fortunately, I use my scarf and what have you. And then got there and 
anyways, I forgot the pin number because I was racing and landed up and then I typed in the wrong pin number. And then so I landed up, I had to come back to the office a third time and get a different card from somebody else and go back to the garage. And by that stage, I was just beside myself and I was like, I'm done, I'm going home. I don't want to face the rest of today. And, you know, can I ask, can anybody relate to having a day like that? <laughs> you know, if you can relate and you are watching on Facebook, if you can type in relate into the chat box, and if you um, are, you don't have your video on, if you can type relate into the chat box, because the, the truth is, is that we all can relate to having days like that. The question is, how are you going to respond to that? How are you going to react to it? And are you going to let it affect you into a red zone space or into a yellow zone space? And for me, like I was just ready to, to give up. I was like, I'm done. I, I just want to go home, go back to bed and not have anything to do with anything. And then it's like, okay, great. So what mood am I in? What mood, you know, describe my mood level. Okay, I'm frustrated. I'm irritated. Why? And if I go back, it was because I was late this morning and because I was racing to get out the house, I left my handbag at home and with my wallet and all my cards and everything. So do I want to blame everybody else for that? Or do I want to take ownership and responsibility myself? And the minute I take responsibility for it myself, now I can start to go, oh, okay, cool. You know what? I was in a rush. I was late. And the reason why I was late is funny enough, I was trying to sort out another client and I had been chatting to them trying to get them you know help them and because I was trying to help somebody else I hadn't prioritized getting my own self ready which was why I was late and I was like okay great it's a really great lesson for me around um, timing and prioritizing and, and that okay great so now I'm feeling better because okay I, I realized where I went wrong in my day but if I don't stop and do that then what happens is it's just going to continue to keep going and it's just going to keep getting worse and worse. And it's going to be suddenly it's like, well, I don't actually want to find anybody. I, I don't want to do anything. And we find ourselves in that, in that yellow zone space where we just procrastinate, we're stuck. And it's big, often it's because we're not willing to actually stop and take a look at where did I go wrong this morning or what happened that you know, that I forgot my handbag or was it just a, a split second where I wasn't present and I, I was carrying five bags into the car and didn't realize that, you know, I hadn't brought my handbag with me because I, you know, put something else in the car or what, where was the point that I, the things actually went wrong. And Marina, I'm sure you see that also with your clients and health. It's a similar sort of thing. Generally, there's a point where they can go back to where they, something went wrong or they weren't present or there was a major upset or something in the lines of health and maybe you can share some of those incidents you've seen okay thanks nicole yes so um when i see clients it's for me it's important to go back in this story to understand you know what's been happening in their life because it's this non-doing being in a yellow zone procrastinating doing certain things and then you actually go down into the red zone specifically in terms of health and unless we go back and recognize but where has this started it's very difficult to change it around because otherwise we just put on a little plaster and treat the symptom and not really getting to what's the the root cause so yeah, I've had lots of clients. So I had clients that I said, when last did you feel healthy? And they would probably say pre-birth. So there's some people that are really, <laughs> unfortunately, um, you know, since they can remember, they've been in a, not a good state. But then there are clients that can give me very specific reasons and, and, when I ask them, they, you know, they can say, oh, um, maybe, oh, I had an accident and this happened. Or, oh, you know what, my, my grandfather died, my grandmother died, and now I'm here. 
So then, we, then we've got a point where we can start talking about what's been going on in your life and why are you in the state where you are at? Specifically because health, physical health is just a manifestation or, or endpoint of something gone wrong on more a mental, emotional level for, for a long time. It's seldom that a physical symptom is just a physical symptom. There is progression. There's, you're not healthy the one day and ill the other day. There's something that's gone, gone wrong. And it's fascinating to go in this journey, understand, but where have you gone wrong? Or when you see relatively healthy people to understand, but where are they in this process of progressing towards a disease state or on their health journey? Yeah. So, yes. Uh, thank you. And it is, it's such a key thing to be able to stop and actually look and go back, well, where, where did things change? What happened? Where, you know, and for some people, it's a case of things changed. You know, Marina said pre-birth. Well, for, for me, maybe it was a day where I just got up on the wrong side of bed <laughs> and my day started, you know, and it just, that that's what happened. So it's, can you look at it and go, okay, so how do I get better from here? Because if you were going through a journey through the Sahara Desert, for example, and you had a cup of water and I don't know, um, you know, half a tank of petrol, <laughs> you'd be very reluctant to get on that journey. <laughs> you'd be procrastinating. You'd, you'd be, mm, I don't know if this is a good idea. I don't know if this is going to work. I don't know, you know, how, you know, how far am I going to get? Where, where are the hiccups? And you already know before you even start. <laughs> that it's not going to be good <laughs> because you don't have the right tools, the right equipment or enough resources. And that's what happens when we're in that state of, you know, like me driving backwards and forwards the garage today. It's like, I'm in that state where it's like, I don't have the right tools. I know I don't have the right tools. I don't have my handbag. So now I'm reluctant to go and sort things out because why? And then that manifests because I'm reluctant to go and, you know, you know, I get there and it's like, I'll flip. I haven't got a mask. I haven't got this. I haven't got that. It's, and it creates this like almost like downward spiral, which is going to get worse and worse. Why? Because I don't have the right tools to begin with, to start off with. And it's the same in our life. When we start off here and we're in the yellow zone and we've lost life force particles through our life and we're in, we don't have a huge amount of energy, it becomes, we, we go through, we create a lot of anxiety, we create a lot of those sort of moods that are stop-start moods, fear, anger, frustration. They're like, should I go or shouldn't I go? Um, um, they're, they're very uncontrolled moods. Um, I had a client um, last week who they were, looking up the definition of anger and, and their realization was there's um, anger comes with a lot of uh, bravery, you know, and, and they're like, I don't see anger as brave. And, and then they're kind of like, oh, when I get angry, I do get brave. When, when I play sport and I get angry, I'll, I'll take on anybody, you know, I'll just, you know, I, this energy comes up. But the biggest thing is, it's not a controlled energy. It's not a I know exactly what the outcome is going to be. I know exactly what's going to happen. It's a very different type of energy to somebody that's really positive and driving towards, you know, um, like when the Springboks won the Rugby World Cup. It's a very different kind of energy. It's not a controlled energy. And it's that I'm uncertain as to what the consequences are going to be. So when we look at moods in here, that's what's being created. And it's because we don't have enough life force particles enough energy so we kind of stop start and we get triggered into all the things that have gone wrong <laughs> so and, and that's exactly what happened to me this morning was like oh it just triggered all the times that i've been stupid and i say the word stupid but all the times where i felt stupid because i did something silly like not have a mask or not leave my handbag at home or and what it does is makes me reluctant to do it again 
and then I become I procrastinate about it. So the next time I need to go to the Woolies garage down the road here, there's a strong chance I'm going to procrastinate about it. <laughs> Why? Because it's going to remind me of today. <laughs> every every time it's like, oh. but the the minute I can become aware of that, now I can start to shift and and change. And Maureen, I'm sure you see the same with your patients. Once they start to get some results and they start to see um, that their energy is trapped in incidents, it becomes easier for them to recover and easier to push on. Yes, you're right. Um, people just need to see some forward shifts because then they realize my energy is not stuck anymore and I can actually take steps. And then if they start celebrating each little step, that will push them forward to, to just um, yeah, lose more weight or remember to eat healthy or do whatever they need to do in order to help themselves to be more healthy. If I just look for myself, I made a deliberate decision to say, I'm going to start doing some high intensity interval training was I've got this stubborn weight around the stomach that now really needs to go. <laughs> and it's been working. And just every day, if, and just feeling that, oh, there's a shift. And that's helped me to continue to say, okay, let me just continue. This is really working and continue because I'm feeling good. So yeah, people, but many times what, People don't recognize it for themselves. You need, sometimes you need someone to ask the question and someone to remind them, where have you been? So I've got a questionnaire for all my clients. Every time they come and see me, they fill in the same questionnaire because then we see the progress. Then they can see for themselves. Oh, my score was that and now my score is this. So that's the, and that's a huge motivator. Because sometimes I ask, oh, how do you feel? Do you feel better? Some of them say, oh, I don't really. Yes, a little bit. And then I say, well, based on this, there's a huge difference. So that's where someone to help you and guide you and just remind you of how far you have come. It's also very important. Yeah, thank you. And, and it is such a great point is just to stop and look and go, well, where am I? And so for me, a great question that I can ask myself is describe my mood level. What's my mood level? And the minute I can start to identify my mood level, then I can now I can start to shift it and change it. And, you know, often it's a lot easier for somebody else to spot it than for ourselves to spot it. And it is like Marina said, that's the value of having a coach, a mentor, someone that you're accountable to is you can just call them up and say, hey, you know, this is, um, you know, I'm, I'm really struggling. <laughs> what do I do? And they generally, they can ask you two or three questions and um, they can help you shift. And so it is just be aware of when you're starting to hit these zones where, you know, I'm procrastinating about something. I'm, you know, why am I procrastinating about it? What's holding me back? Where's the fear coming from? Where's the anxiety coming from? Where's the, you know, and then you can start to, to shift and change it yourself. But when you see it in other people, it's also important, can you help them? Because the chances are they can't see it. And I, I know myself, it's like sometimes it's like, today I was like in such a state by the time I got back here, I was like, I'm done. I'm going home. I'm like, had it. And then it's like, okay, deep breath. <laughs> and okay, right. Describe my mood level. Okay. <laughs> but, you know, sometimes it's great to have somebody else there supporting you. And when you see people in your team, just be aware. And, you know, one of the biggest things uh, in Alan, Alan C. Walter, who wrote the book, The Secrets to Increasing Your Power, Wealth and Happiness, he said, one of the toughest professions to be in is sales. And he said, because every time you make a call, you're running into people that hate salespeople or they hate your product or they hate somebody else. <laughs> and if you're not aware of that and you go out and you're making all these sales calls, pretty soon you're going to find yourself, your mood level was up here 
And then by the end of the day, you're here and tomorrow morning, you're going to wake up in a really bad mood and you're, you're, you're not, you're not going to understand why. And it's why, because you took on all the stuff that people put on you from the day before from making sales calls. And, and sometimes it's just having a good laugh about it and, and like, you know, oh, this person said this and this person said that and just getting some of that stuff off of you. Because otherwise what's going to happen is you're going to absorb that stuff and then tomorrow <laughs> when you're making calls, you're going to be less reluctant <laughs> to make calls because you're going to be thinking about the guy that was rude to you yesterday at or you're going to be thinking about all those things. And so what it does is it actually starts to sink you down the zones if you're not aware that that's what's actually happening. So especially in your teams, that's why it's so great to phone with other people because you can laugh about, oh, you know, what, what a loser. That, that guy just, you know, he, he said this, that, and the next thing. Or, and you can push some of that stuff off, keep your energy up here and move through it until you get a win. But if you're not careful... You're going to take on all the stuff. And I, I'm pretty sure, Marina, as a doctor, you experience that too. You experience all the stuff that people tell you, everything that's wrong, all this stuff. And if you're not careful, you, you find yourself in the same in the same space. Would that be correct, fair to say? Yes, definitely. I think this is what I've experienced this morning. I've got a client and everything I'm suggesting and you know if they need to do this there's this pushback the whole time and it's this in a sense blaming you're too expensive and and to all of you this is to that why that why that and it's all just actually an indication of the client's state of mind and where they are at and the reluctance and stuckness in really to take ownership of what they need to do so it's easier to start blaming someone else and and yeah and now that you say that it, it's so easy if i'm not in a way to take that on because now that you're saying it i realize that's partially why i said yeah i'm in a bit of a red zone because it's taking on that negative energy of someone else and not being present enough to realize that it's it's not me, it's actually someone else's, they are in pain, they really need the help. So how, what can I then do to help them to, to shift? Yeah, and, and it is, it's such a key thing is how can you help other people when you see it? Because often, and as I think we said this earlier, it is so much easier to see it in other people. It's so much easier to, when somebody's resisting something and they're, you're getting pushed back on everything, you know, you can ask them what's happening, how, how's it working? And um, so it is, it's just important to be aware of when are you sitting in this zone of being cautious, when you're reluctant, are you you know, call reluctant. Do you have a reluctance to contact people? Do you have a reluctance to ask for money? Do you have a reluctance to produce? Um, you know, a reluctance for prosperity, a reluctance to be known, reluctance to act. All of these things are all things that keep us stuck in the yellow zone and actually push us further, further down into the yellow, the red zone. And what happens is as we do that, we start to lose touch with truth and honesty because the truth is I could have blamed anybody for what happened this morning but the truth was it was my fault <laughs> it wasn't anybody else's fault but the more I take on that stuff the more I'm going to push it back I'm going to push it down into here and I'm going to start to blame and I'm going to start to justify it like Marina said with her patients it's oh you're too expensive and it's your fault and it's it would, it would be easier for me to go home and go back to bed. It would be easier for me to do this and do that. And we, we don't then, we find things to justify where we're at instead of looking to be responsible. So if you are in a place where you are looking to blame somebody or justify, there's a strong chance you're sitting in either the red or the yellow zone. But the minute you 
the minute you realize that if you start to take responsibility for it and go okay wh where was i responsible what part did i play in this what am i responsible for what can i change then you can shift back up here into the, into the green zone and i think that's such a key thing because it's so it, it's so much easier and we do we feel so much better when i can blame somebody else it's somebody else's fault <laughs> somebody else made me feel like this it's so much easier to feel like that and to say those things rather than to look at it and go what did i do and the minute you go what did i do now i can take responsibility for it i can shift and change and get into a better space and marina i'm sure you you experience that as well with patients the minute they acknowledge that they're responsible then they start to shift Yes, there's a big change if they if someone takes ownership, because if you take ownership that just that taking ownership already starts shifting you more towards the positive. Otherwise, they, they stay stuck and doesn't matter what what pill you give or whatever you do, you can give them all the fantastic supplements. And if they're not willing to shift and change the the viewpoint or the the response that that's not going to help they can eat the best food they can do the most exercise but it's about is taking responsibility for the right reasons and I'm, I'm pretty sure you've seen with your patients that when they take ownership and they take responsibility they're more willing to do the right activities and generally they do more than the right activities they don't just do the bare minimum they do a lot more Yes, no, they do quite a lot and you see the changes, you just see the shifts and they they immediately get get better and they get the results. Doing Airbnb is one thing and I mean there are a lot of companies that manage it. Sorry, we have some, we're, we're running a, a red zone experience here. With, we've now got, um, just, just hold on tabs. Can you sort the lights out for me, please? Um, oh dear. So, um, just, yeah, in terms of that, right, I've got the, I turned the speakers on and they shouldn't have been on. And so it's Bluetooth to somewhere else in the office and it's pulling in that stuff. And, and, I have to have a chuckle because that that's, you, you know, in terms of, again, I'm the one that's responsible for, for making, for having that speaker on because it's happened once before where um, it picked up somebody else. And um, so it, it is, it's just, you know, what are you willing to be responsible for? So it's a really, really great um, point around that because it is it's just that's what happens if you're if you don't take responsibility and and move forward in the right way and and um yeah so it is it's just uh, <laughs> i have to have a, a chuckle because it, it's just it is if if you're not present and you're not taking responsibility the same things are going to keep happening and keep happening and that's exactly what happened today <laughs> Yeah. So, Marina, anything else you want to comment on that? Well, I can say it's it's so key to be present, and it's so easy to be unconscious, and and then those things slip up. So, yeah, <laughs> presence, presence, presence. I think that's a, that's the yeah. key. Yeah, and to be and, aware and then, when you're not present. Yeah. And, and it is exactly that it's to be aware when you're not present and not to take on the um, the blame and the, the guilt and all those emotions, because that's exactly what I could do right now. I could be going, oh, flip, you know, I'm so stupid. I'm such an idiot and I can keep myself stuck here. Or I can go, OK, great. This is now the second time this has happened with these speakers. I am not going to have it happen a third time <laughs> when I come in and the speakers are on because it's just you know, you switch it on the wall and switches everything on and just because it's easy. So it's just being responsible to make sure that, that that's 
you know, I'm taking ownership of it. I'm making sure that I'm turning on the right equipment and only the equipment that I need. So, and, and it is that being present and how can you learn from it and, and go forward from it. And this is just a little example, um, the speakers, but it, it happens with a lot of things in our life and it happens in our businesses um, more so than what we actually realize. And it's just, it's when you stop and you kind of look at it and go, what am I taking ownership for? What am I taking responsibility for? Then you can start to, to shift and move. So yeah, Marina, anything else you want to add? I think you've said it all. <laughs> Nothing that I can add now. Yeah, so I, I guess the biggest thing is that what I would say is have a look at the areas in your life and, and go, where, where are you sitting with a reluctance or a fear or an anxiety? And there's a, you'll be, that area in your life will be yellow zone. You know, is it a reluctance in your business to call people? Is there a reluctance to, and then you can look at it and go, where are those trapped life force particles? You know, and, and for me, it's, it's just like, I can look at it and I can use the example of the garage this morning. Okay, so the next time I'm procrastinating about going grocery shopping, there's a strong chance that that's what's getting triggered the time that I've left my, all the times I've left my wallet behind, all the times I've done something, you know, like left a mask behind or forgotten something. And if I'm starting to procrastinate, I can look at it and go, what's actually happening? What am I avoiding? Where do I have life force particles tied up and trapped in that? If, if it's a tomorrow morning when it's two degrees again and I don't want to get out of bed, am I looking at it going, I need to be present now and get up now and push through today because this is going to affect the rest of my week? Or am I going, it's okay, <sighs> I'll let it slide, I, I, you know, I'm not going to go today, I'm going to go tomorrow. And then like Marina shared, she's been doing um, high intensity exercises to, to help her get rid of some um, unwanted weight around her waist. Well, if she's not present, and not aware of that. And every day she's going, I'll get up and I'll go to the gym tomorrow. I'll get up and I'll do that exercise tomorrow. Tomorrow's what's going to happen. In three weeks time, she's going to be sitting there going, kicking herself, pulling on all those emotions of guilt and anxiety and frustration because I should have done this. And I, you know, I should have got out of bed and I should have done my exercises and I haven't. And then she's sitting in all that reluctance and it's, it's because of all the time she's gone, it's cold, I'm going to stay in bed. <laughs> and, the, you know, and then we take on all the guilt and the frustration and the anxiety and the fear of, oh, I'm not delivering what I promised to myself. And because I'm not delivering what I promised to myself, suddenly I don't trust myself. Suddenly I don't want to do anything. I don't want to commit to anything because what if I don't do it again? <laughs> what if it's like last time? <laughs> what if I... Don't get out of bed. What happens if this happens? And, and we suddenly are in that space where it's driving through the Sahara Desert with half a tank of fuel and half a cup of, or a cup of water, and we don't actually know where we're going to go. So um, if this is making sense to you, if you can type yellow into the chat box, that would be great. And um, so... Um, I, I love that Sean says we have no excuses Eskimos get out of bed every day. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I can, I can find some really great excuses, you know, Eskimos have central heating and Eskimos have this and Eskimos have that and <laughs> Eskimos don't live where I live. And it would be so easy to find all those excuses and justify and, you know, oh, you know, it's, uh, it's Eskom's fault. We've got load shedding and, you know, or it's this fault, or it's that, or it would be, it's so easy for us to blame, justify, deny, instead of going, okay, great, you know what? You're right, I don't have an excuse. If Eskimos can do it, I can do it too. <laughs> and, and that's very much that when you're on purpose, you will find things to push you forward. So it's, if, if so, if, you know what? If uh, Kirsten can get out of bed every day or if Marina can, can do high intensity exercise, well, I can get out of bed and I can do it too. 
And instead of looking for reasons to justify why we can't, we should be looking for reasons to justify why we can. And that's how you're going to shift yourself out of this yellow zone is what's your mood level? Where's it coming from? And what are you wanting to create? And when you're focusing on what you're wanting to create, you will get out of bed. You will do the exercise. You will stop procrastinating. You will make those calls. Because when you're focusing on the things you want to create in terms of your business or, you know, I want to create a hundred thousand rand business or a two million rand business, whatever it is. And, and, you know, if it's, I want to generate two million rand this month, well, I'm going to make the calls because I know what I need to do. And I'm, I'm clear on my purpose. I'm clear on what I want to create. And that's the one thing like with the yellow zone here is there's a lot of doubt and uncertainty. I'm not clear on what I want to create. I'm not clear on what it is that I want to do. I'm not clear on why I need to do this. So if Marina's got a patient that's stuck and they're not um, moving forward and they're not getting better, there's a pretty strong chance that that patient ha has no clarity on why they want to get better. They're not clear on what is the purpose of improving my health, or they're not clear on their reasons for doing this, or they're not clear on, is Marina the right doctor for me? There will be some doubt and uncertainty somewhere. And it's, you know, can we help them find it? <laughs> and, and that's like Marina says, that's all she's doing is when you are sitting in doubt and uncertainty, do you have somebody that can help you find where that doubt and uncertainty is coming from? Do you have a mentor that can help you? Do you, are you writing things out on a piece of paper and, and unpacking things and just getting clarity as to the different reasons why and where? Um, those are some of the things that you can do to help you shift out of the, the, the yellow zone. The other thing you can do is, is write up all the, the wins, all the things you've done well. You know, what are the successful actions that you have taken to get where you are? And can you repeat them? Because often we kind of find ourselves in a space where I did a lot of successful actions. I got a really great result and now I'm not getting that anymore. Or maybe you shifted something or tweaked something or changed it. Well, the minute you start to write up all those successful actions, it's going to start to trigger all the things that you did. Okay, great. So I made five calls a day for, for 10 days in a row. Okay, great. Well, can I do that again? Let me see if I can do that again and create the same success. And now you're betting on yourself in a positive way as opposed to going, oh, I don't feel like doing the calls. Oh, well, what happens if nobody answers the, the calls? And what happens if, if you know, somebody's rude to me? And what happens if somebody, um, you know, says that I was rude or they don't want to talk to me? Or, But the minute you go, right, I'm going to, these are the successful actions I did. Let me just repeat them and see if I can create the same success. I'm doing the same action. I've just shifted the way I'm thinking. I'm not thinking red zone, I'm thinking green zone. So it's, can you shift yourself out of that space as fast as possible to look at it from a different perspective? And I know Marina, with your clients, I'm pretty sure that that's one of the things you do is help the clients shift into understanding why they are where they are and the reason and the benefits of doing what it is that they're doing. Yes, you're right. And just to help them to take that first step, because if they can take one step, they can take a second step. And then they can continue taking all those little steps that if you look back over a week, a month, a year, they've had tremendous gains. So it's just that try to stay, stay in action. Because otherwise it's that law of inertia. If you go if you sit there and, and you're stuck, it's very easy just to stay stuck there. And it's difficult to get you moving, but if you're moving, it's much easier to move and continue moving. So yeah, I, I think the key here yeah, is, yeah, continue moving, do something, small steps. Yeah, and what I was going to say before I interrupted you was just, it's very, there's that old saying, you know, you can't steer a parked car. When the car is stuck, <laughs> And it's not moving it's very difficult to turn the wheels you can but it's really difficult and besides that it's not actually going anywhere so 
you, you can change the direction of where the wheels are pointing, but it's not going to change anything in the in the car. And I think often that's where we sit when we're in the yellow zone here is we kind of think, well, if I do a little bit and, and we kind of turn the steering wheel, but the car's not moving <laughs> and we stay stuck and we kind of go, nothing's working. And this is frustrating me and this is irritating. But the truth is we're not taking enough action. We're not duplicating the results that or some of the actions that we've done in the past to get enough momentum to shift. And, and I think that's one of the, the big things around the yellow zone is because we're so cautious, we, you know, I'm not gonna go and start a business. I'm gonna go and work for somebody else. I'm gonna be kind of become an employee. I'm not gonna, you know what? My business isn't going that well at the moment. I'm just gonna shut it down and go get a job or, you know, things aren't, and, and we kind of stay stuck and we don't push through and we don't keep taking the action and keep driving that and driving that. So I really would encourage you if you're feeling stuck or you're feeling like you're having, you know, those that call reluctance, that fear and anxiety, what action can you take? And even if it's just right, writing up the successful actions that you've done in the past, that will make a significant difference. Why? Because it's going to trigger positive things that are up here and you're going to go, oh, that wasn't difficult. Oh, I can do that. I can, you know, and just by writing up some of the successful actions that you've taken in the past and then setting yourself a challenge, can I just go and do those actions again? It'll shift. And then look at your mood level. What mood level are you doing it in? You know, and just, is it frustration? Is it anger? Is it, am I being responsible? Am I taking ownership for all the parts? Not just some of the pieces, because it's easy to take responsibility for some of the pieces. And um, I think it was last week I, I was listening to a uh, sort of a podcast, and and one of the things is, was if you look at responsibility as wholeness, when you become responsible for everything, you can become whole. But you can't be ninety nine percent whole and still be whole. <laughs> you can't be take 99% responsibility and expect everything to, to be okay. No, you got to take 100% responsibility. And then you will be whole. <laughs> and then you can move forward. So it's such a, it's so easy to blame, justify, deny, just that one little bit. Yes, yeah, no, it was my fault that I, I left my bag, my bag at home. But you know, it's the dog's fault because the dog jumped up on me and distracted me. That's, not taking responsibility. That's I'm blaming the dog, essentially. <laughs> um, so it's such a, a key thing. Be aware of, you know, just that little but. You know, I'm willing to be responsible, but <laughs> if, you know, it would everything would have been okay if. And there's some really, they're very small little words, but if, <laughs> but they can have a lot of impact on us. So I really would just encourage you, when you're looking at those things, look at it, what, are, what can I be responsible for? And if there's anything in there that you're not responsible for, look at it and go, well, how could I have been responsible for that? <laughs> and it will help you shift. Yeah, so Marina, as we, we're starting to, to finish up here, is there anything else you'd like to, to add? Yeah, you've spoken about being responsible for and being responsible for and do something with responsibility is different from reacting. And I think that's, that's the important piece. If you take responsibility, you take ownership. Reacting is unconscious. So we come back to taking ownership, be aware, be extremely present when you're taking responsibility and for where you are at. So that's what I want to add. Yeah, thank you. And it, it is, it's such a, I, I mean, last week I, I shared, at least I think it was last week, I shared a, a story of somebody that comes to CrossFit and, and they were complaining about they hadn't had any power for a couple of days and, and they were really, really red zone and blaming, all they were looking for was somebody to, you know, take their side of the story and, and someone to listen to. They weren't looking for a solution. And, you know, today that same person is now going around, well, check this load shedding. I don't have to worry about load shedding. I can keep doing what I'm doing. Why? Because 
they took responsibility. They went out, they bought a generator, they bought a gas um, stove, and now they're in a place where they can be, they're, they're taking responsibility for all the actions. And, and it, it's, whereas previously, as Marina said, they were reacting. She was just reacting to, you know, it's not fair and this sucks and that sucks and, you know, it's ESCOM's fault and it's this person's fault and why don't people put stuff there to protect the cables and all this stuff. And it was just blaming, blaming, blaming instead of going, how can I take responsibility? What can I be responsible for? Well, I can be responsible for getting a generator. I can be responsible for looking after myself. And now the benefits, I'm already seeing those benefits. Like for, for that person already within a week, she's seeing the benefits because now we're sitting in load shedding. And for those of you who don't understand what load shedding it is, is Pretty much it just means we get our power switched off for a couple of hours and we get a schedule and we hope they stick to the schedule, <laughs> which is, um, you know, no, so it's just being aware of that is that, you know, in this case with that lady that I told you about last week, suddenly she's now way more in control of her life because if the power goes off, she can keep working and just turn on a generator and make herself a cup of tea or whatever it is she needs to to stay warm or what have you. So it is, it's just be aware of when you take responsibility, it's going to affect a whole lot of different other areas in your life that you probably are not aware of, but the benefits will be, you will see them. So the minute you start to take responsibility instead of react. So again, I'd encourage you take responsibility, stop and look where is that reluctance? Where is that caution? What's causing it? What mood level do you want to do it in? And, and start to take responsibility, shift. You'll see massive changes. You'll be able to put yourself into a more green zone position. Um, because here's, here's the, the, the reality is we all have experiences where we are red zone. <laughs> no matter what we try and do, there's that one little step where something goes wrong. The one piece where you're not present, one piece where life happens. And the choice is yours. Do you want to stay there or do you want to shift? And the minute you take responsibility for it, you'll start to see yourself shift and you'll start to see yourself get better and better. So I, I really would encourage you, you know, take responsibility, look at the things that you've done in your past. It, Yes, it hurts sometimes to admit that I'm not perfect and I made a mistake. But trust me, the benefits will far outweigh that when you do take responsibility and you do acknowledge I made a mistake or I wasn't present or it's my fault. And then you'll start to, to see that shift and, and make a difference in a lot, of, a lot of different places. So I just want to say thank you, Marina, for being with us today and for, for giving up of your time. Um, so yeah, any final words you'd like to add before we, we finish off? Yeah, just to remember to stay present <laughs> and to be aware when you're not present. Yeah, and thank you. And it is just such a great thing, point is just to be present. And for those of you who have not yet downloaded the Green Zone 30 Day Challenge, um, I really would encourage you um, download the link. Um, so please put it into the chat box. Um, you know, the um, but you'll be able to practice presence there. Practice writing up wins. Successful actions are a really great thing to do too. If if you're struggling with wins today, we'll write down some of the su successful actions you've done in the past. That will make us a, a big difference in a lot of areas. So I really want to encourage you. Stay present, write out wins, write out your successful actions and, and take responsibility for, for your life because nobody else is going to take responsibility for it except you. And you deserve it. You deserve to have greatness in your life. So special thank you to um, Tabo and Sully for running the back end. Really appreciate it. Marina, thank you for your time today. Have an awesome, awesome Green Zone week. And we will see you back here next week, Wednesday at 3 p.m. I'm looking forward to it. So thank you to everybody who joined us and we will see you soon. Thank you and goodbye.